So thanks very much for joining us today for this webinar. We're going to cover two different products, but show those products working together. So we're going to talk about the ORCID document management link, as well as the Tyrox check approval product. I'm not going to spend too much time here in PowerPoint. We're actually just going to show you the software today, but just to give you a few um, highlights of each of these products and the, the key features. So with document management link, we're giving you the ability to link documents to uh, every screen in Sage 300, and we're linking at the field level. So you can link to any field on any screen in any module of Sage 300 and any other third party module that's written in the SDK. So typically, if you can see that module within Sage 300, you'll be able to use document management link with those products as well. One of the key benefits for Document Management Link is we are storing documents outside of Sage 300, so we're not affecting your Sage database in any way. And you can store those documents. Today, I'm just going to be showing you using network folders. But if you wanted to use Google Docs, Dropbox, OneDrive, or SharePoint, you can use any of those deposit, uh, document depositories and use Document Management Link in the same way that you'll see today. I'll also show you how you can optionally choose to rename a document when you're storing it in the Document Management Link window and how you can send emails directly from Document Management Link. The other product that we're going to highlight today is called uh, SOX Check Approval from Tyrox, where you can force an approval process around the AP payment batch. So you can't print checks or post the payment batch until it's been approved. This also has an external approval console. So people responsible for doing approvals do not need to log into Sage 300 to do that approval. It's done from an external approval console. And in fact, you could uh, run that on something like an iPad. And it was originally developed for someone that wanted to be able to do approvals from an iPad. So with the, with, with the correct infrastructure, you could use an iPad to do the approvals. You can have up to four different approval workflows, and I'll highlight those in the presentation today. And you can have up to three different levels of approval. And um, you can send email notifications throughout the approval process. And I'll also show you an audit report that's available uh, when you're using uh, the SOX check approval. And we're showing these two products together today because they integrate. So Tyrox wrote an integration piece where you can use document management link with SOX check approval and be able to see the backup throughout the payment approval process, including in the external approval console. Typically, document management link only works inside Sage 300, but because Tyrox wrote this integration piece, you can view those documents from that external approval console as well. And then what we've added in what we're calling the enterprise edition, and this would be for large companies that have multiple bank accounts and potentially need to do different approval workflows. We've now added the ability for you to do specific workflows around a bank account. And I'll show you how that works today. So without further ado, we'll move straight over to the products and we'll show you the software itself. So first we'll start with document management link. I'll show you how that works. And we'll do it around AP. Um, a, because we're talking about payments today as well, but accounts payable seems to be a popular place where people want to be viewing documents. So if we open up our AP invoice batch, and I've just labeled a batch for our webinar today for March 7th. And um, so the way document management link works is you'll notice this additional window appears beside the Sage screen. So um, this can be changed in size. I've pinned it to my Sage screen. So if I move or minimize my Sage screen, the document management link will move with it or minimize with it. And that's helpful if you're opening multiple screens in Sage 300. It's a way for you to keep track of the documents attached to each screen. 
And you'll notice too that it mimics the color coding. So if you have multiple companies uh, and they're different colors, then again, an easy way to keep track of the documents related to each company. Now I mentioned we're linking at the field level. So the first example we have here is where we've linked to a document number, a vendor number. Sorry, I'll just ask that everyone please make sure your microphones are muted. Um, so the first field is around the vendor number. So we're linking to the vendor number field and then based on the value within that field, it knows which documents to display. So on my C drive, let's just close this. On my C drive, if we go to my C drive, ORCID, documents, for my AP documents, you'll see here for vendor 5010, there's a folder here. And when I open up that folder, that's what I'm seeing in the document management link window. Now, this product is sophisticated enough that once you get the folder hierarchy in place, this will start to build out for you. So you notice here, I've only got folders for vendor 1200, 1350, and 5010. If we go to the next entry, you'll notice that it's for vendor 7200 and there's nothing showing here because I haven't linked any documents to that vendor yet. So if I go to add a document and I can just, you know, go out anywhere in my environment to pick up the document that I want to link here and I can just grab that and drag it over the document management link window. Um, and what's happened in this case is it's created the folder for my vendor 7200 and then filed that document into that folder. So if we go back to my C drive, ORCID documents for my AP documents, you'll see here it created the folder for vendor 7200 and then it, it uh, linked that document and stored it in that folder. So, you know, it can build out for you automatically as you're uh, going through the process. So once you get your initial implementation done, it should be able to build out for you automatically. Now, what I've done in this second window is I've done a configuration around two fields. So in this instance, I am storing the document in that vendor folder. So in my vendor 5010 folder, I'm gonna store that document. But in this particular window, I wanna isolate based on the document number. So I'm linking to the vendor number and the document number field. And this gives me an easy way to view the documents related to this particular entry. But I don't want to have a separate folder for every document that I set up an AP invoice for. So I'm grouping them by vendor. But by doing this second configuration, I can easily view the documents that relate to this particular entry. So when I go to add a document here and I drag it into the document management link window, you notice from my suspense folder, it just said invoice. And when I dragged it into the window, it renamed the document. So that's what I alluded to earlier, where you can optionally configure document management link to rename a document. And in this instance, I specified when I drag a document into that window, I want to rename it based on the document number that was entered on the AP invoice entry screen. So um, you can link as many documents as you want. If I go to add another document here, if I drag another Excel document in, it's going to recognize that it already renamed an Excel document to 307-1. So it gives you the ability to overwrite. So if you've dragged an incorrect document in, you can overwrite what's there. If you're doing it on a different date and you want to put a date stamp on it, you can do that or you can just start to add dash one, dash two, and so on. So you're not limited to the number of documents that you link through the window. The box will expand and add in a scroll bar where necessary if you exceed the, the size of the window. Uh, there's no limit to the types of documents that you link here. As long as you have the necessary program, you can double click and open up any of those documents through the document management link window. Now, in the third instance, uh, we've linked to the purchase order number. 
And so this is where I'm linking to this purchase order number field. Now, in this instance, the documents would have been attached in the purchase order module. Um, but what you can do within your configuration, you can choose to view documents against all screens. So in the case of this PO number, the configuration that I did was uh, when I link a document to a purchase order number, I want to be able to see those documents against every screen where the purchase order number appears. So because it's appearing here in the AP invoice screen, I can see that document here. So you can choose to isolate to a particular screen and only see documents against chosen screens, or as I've done in this case for the PO, I've specified I wanna see documents against all screens where that purchase order number appears. Now, I mentioned earlier that you can link to any field on any screen in any module of Sage 300. And the bottom illustration here is just showing that I've linked to the GL account here in the entry grid. So um, truly limitless in terms of the fields that you can link to. Your only limitations would be something like a, an on hold button or a checkbox, um, or in some cases a Sage screen has a drop down list. So we can't link to that, but any other open field on the screen you can link documents to. Um, the green box here in the middle is actually a separate product that we're not showing today. It's a notes product. It gives you the ability to store freeform notes against any field in Sage 300. Um, but as I said, that's not a product we're showing today, just explaining why that green box is there. So um, document management link installs under a product that we call information manager. So it's just going to install as a module within Sage 300. And it has different components to it. Uh, that's why you're seeing the notes, because notes is another component of Information Manager. But you certainly can purchase Document Management Link on its own. Um, and this is where the configuration is done. So I'm not going to go too far into this, but just to give you an idea of what in, is entailed in setting up Document Management Link. Um, you would choose, in my case, network folder, but as I mentioned earlier, it could be Google Docs, Dropbox, OneDrive, or SharePoint. Um, with SharePoint, of course, there would be some additional configuration because you have to link to the SharePoint site and you have to add tags and so on. Um, but nonetheless, you can use this product with SharePoint if that's something that you're using. And then you're going to specify the field label. <clears throat> so in our case where I was storing the document related to my AP invoice entry, I was linking to the vendor number field and then also linking to the document number field. And then you're going to put the path in, uh, in my case, to my network folder that I'm storing those documents in. So it was my C drive, ORCID, documents, my AP documents, and then by putting the curly bracket value in the file path, um, I'm signifying when you have to create a new folder, uh, then use the value, and the value was the vendor number, so that's how it knew how to create that folder uh, for the vendor number. And then, uh, as I mentioned, you can optionally rename a document, and in this case, I said use value two. When I drag a document in, I want to use value two to rename that document. So it's a pretty straightforward configuration. Um, you know, the majority of an implementation for a product like this is really sitting down and determining which screens and which fields you want to link documents to and how you want to store those documents, uh, whether it's in your network folder or the other repositories that I mentioned. So um, that's the overall for document management link. Now we're going to move into the Tyrox check approval product. And this also is a module that we'll install within Sage 300. And there's just the one setup screen for check approval. Um, I mentioned that the approval console is external. So it's just a separate SQL instance. So you would link to the server. Um, and then in my case, I created a database that I just called approval. 
and then you can test that connection and that approval console sits out here on your start menu. And then um, we're adding in um, a Sage 300 user. I've just used admin. You can choose any user within the company. Um, but this is how the Tyrox check approval updates the payment batch. So whatever user you choose here has to have the correct rights within Sage 300 to update the AP payment batch. Uh, because what happens is when that batch gets submitted for approval, the batch is put on hold. And then once the approval takes place, it is automatically updated by the software. So you don't have to uh, pull those approvals in. You don't have to run a process. It's going to happen automatically. And the user that's set up here is the user that's going to go into the background and update that batch. So they just have to have the proper uh, rights to update the AP payment batch. You can send uh, email notifications throughout the process. So it's SMTP, um, so you would just fill that in uh, for the, um, the email messages to go out throughout the process, throughout the approval process. Um, and then I've got mine linked with do a document management link. Anyone out there that uh, is already using Alltech DocLink, uh, Tyrox wrote an integration for the Alltech DocLink product as well. And then the company tab, this is where you define the workflows. So there's um, four different types of workflows uh, that you can use. So you can specify that all payments need to be approved at all levels, um, or you can start to um, put in approval limit thresholds and you can do up to three levels of approval here. So one, two or three levels of approval. Um, so you can put in approval limits so the software knows it either everything goes to level one, then level two, then level three, but they can only approve based on their approval limit. Or as I'm going to show you today, uh, we're going to have the general manager do the first level of approval and they have a limit up to $2,000. So they're going to do any approvals that are below 2000 and then anything above 2000 is actually going to skip the general manager and go to the controller for approval. So as I mentioned, you can choose to have everything go to every user in the process, or as I'm going to show you today, we're going to skip users based on the dollar value threshold and who needs to approve it. Um, and then the final way that you can do it would be just a group of approvers. So you can just nominate a group of approvers and specify how many in that group need to approve it for it to move forward. Now, I mentioned at the top, uh, the latest feature is the ability for you to do approvals at the bank level. So um, I'll show you an example today where we're doing uh, an approval just for this particular bank code. If you have different bank accounts that you want to do approvals for, you would specify a workflow for each of those bank accounts. Um, and then what happens is any bank accounts that are not listed here will just revert back to that company workflow. So if you're just doing it at the company level, you don't have to fill anything in here at all. Um, but I'll show you an awesome. example. And that approval will be done by the accounts payable clerk whereas these ones for the company will be done with the general manager and the controller. And then um, there is a data tab. So this is going to keep track of those AP batches that have gone through the software. So you can go back and review any previous batches that have gone through and who did the approval. Um, and then this final database tab, it's only going to be used when you initially set up the software. So I mentioned the approval console you create a SQL instance, and then you would come here to this database tab and just hit the create button, and it's going to create the necessary tables in that approval console. So it's quite straightforward to set that up. Just create the SQL instance, put in the information here, and then click that uh, create under the database tab, and that's going to create the approval console for you. So um, up in accounts payable, oh, sorry, one more thing. Let me just go to this options tab. So you have a few options here. So what I've set here is um, this is the approval status. So this is when something goes into the approval console. You have some options here. 
you can choose to send everything in as approved and the user will just uncheck, decline any payments they don't want to go through. Or you can send everything in as unapproved and the approver will need to activate the tick box for each payment within the batch. Um, or as what I'm doing today is I'm saying if anything is less than $500, send that into the approval console as approved. Um, and then anything above that, the user is going to have to activate the tick box to approve it. You have the, you're doing the approval at the payment level rather than at the batch level. So it gives you the flexibility to remove a payment from that batch. So you're not holding up the entire batch. You can just specify certain payments that you don't want to approve. And we'll do that today. I'll, I'll decline one of the payments in the batch. And um, it, what the system does is, uh, in my case, I'm saying uh, anything that I do not approve, create a new batch for that. So you don't have to rekey those payments. It'll just create a new batch for you. Now, you can also specify the payment types that you want to get approved. So these are your payment types that are set up in accounts payable. Um, so I, in my case, I'm just approving checks. I'm not doing credit card payments or petty cash or anything like that. Um, and you can also choose to exclude payment codes from AP. So certain things that you're not going to bother doing an approval against, you can exclude those payment codes. Um, this product works quite nicely with the ORCID EFT module. So you could, you know, because ORCID EFT is an automated process where you're paying EFT vendors uh, or receiving from uh, EFT customers, but in this case, we're just talking vendors, um, you could choose to exclude the EFT payment code. So you only want to approve paper checks that are going out. Because EFT is an automated process, I don't need to review those. I just want to review paper-based checks that I'm sending out, just as an example of you know, why you might exclude a, a payment code. And then activate the email notification as it goes through the approval process. So when we come up to AP, and what I've done is I created an invoice batch, and then we'll go ahead and create the payment batch from this invoice batch. Uh, just to show that we're not changing anything about the way Sage 300 will behave in terms of creating AP invoices or creating the AP payment batch. So as I mentioned, I created this batch uh, strictly for our presentation today. And so we have one invoice that is um, under $500. So we'll expect that to go into the approval console as approved. And then um, the next payment we have here in the batch, we've got uh, that's under $2,000. So that's gonna go to our general manager for approval. And we'll go ahead and add a document here for that. And then our third payment is over $2,000. So that's going to skip the general manager and go to the controller for approval. And again, we'll add a copy of the invoice. And then finally, we've got a fourth payment in this batch that's again over $2,000. We'll send that to the controller for approval and we'll decline this one so that you can see how that will work if you wanna remove a payment from the batch. And we've linked all of our documents here in document management link. So we'll go ahead and post this invoice batch. And then come over and we'll create our payment batch. So I've, I've got a payment batch here, but you can see here there's nothing in it. So I just created the batch for us. And we'll start to add in these payments. So we'll just call that March 7. And the first vendor was 5010. And there's our invoice 307-1. So we'll add that to the payment batch. And you can see I'm seeing the backup documents here against the AP payment entry screen. 
And our next vendor was vendor 7200. And here's 307 dash two. So we'll add that payment. And then it was vendor 8950. And there's 307 dash three. So we'll add that. And then finally, the fourth payment will be for vendor 9230. And there it is there, 307-4. So nothing different about the way I'm entering the payment. So there's our payment batch. Now what you'll notice here is we've added an extra button to the extended, uh, we've called it the extended payment batch. So it's the same payment batch screen that you're used to in Sage 300, but we've added this button and we've put a control around the screen. So if I try to print checks or post the payment batch, it's going to tell me it hasn't been approved. So you can't print those checks and you can't post the batch. So the user will just submit that for approval. So batch 91, yes, I want to submit that for approval. And um, the approvers have been notified. So I mentioned the notifications that will go th uh, throughout the approval process. And um, you'll see here the button uh, sits in an in-progress status. So it's put this batch on hold. So nothing can be changed within that batch while it's going through the approval process. And any user logging in will see that it's currently in progress. You can click on that. And as it goes through the approval process, you can see who's done the approvals. Um, and then ultimately um, when it's completed, then this will automatically update to approved, and then you'll be able to print the checks and post the batch. So if we go, we'll see the first notification here. So this has gone to the general manager. And of course you can decide what the text reads here, but this is um, how that notification will work. So now we'll log in as um, the general manager. And what we'll expect to see here is the first payment will be approved because it was under $500 and I specified in the options that I don't need to approve anything under $500. And then there'll be one payment that was um, under $2,000 that the general manager is responsible to approve. Um, if you're running multiple Sage companies and you want to do, you know, the same person is responsible for doing approvals, then you can have multiple companies filter into the same approval console. It'll just be a tree view like this, and then you'll open up for each company and you'll be able to see the batch uh, that needs to be approved. So this is our webinar March 7th batch, and you can see here the first payment went in as approved because it was under $500. And the second payment is the one that I need to review and approve. And down here, you can see this dynamically changes as I click on each line. And I can click on that button and I can view the documents that have been attached. So that's the integration with document management link where I can view documents outside of Sage 300 in this, in this approval console. So at the top, some information about the batch in AP. I can see the company, the description of that batch, um, the batch number, how many entries, in this case, just these two that needs to be approved by this user, uh, the bank that it's drawn against. So I can go ahead and activate this button and save it. And then I can go ahead and approve this. Um, at any point in the process, you can return the batch. So if there's something that the AP clerk needs to amend before it gets approved, you can return it back to the person that submitted the batch, or you can just return it to the person in front of you that did the approval ahead of you. Um, so it's you have that capability to move it backwards if needed, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and approve that. So it's been approved, and now an email notification would have gone to the controller. So we'll just fetch this here. 
So here we are. So this one now has gone to the controller. And this is telling me who originally submitted the batch, how many levels of approval are required. And in this case, the general manager has done their part of the approval. So then we'll log in as the controller. And I'm only doing two levels of approval today. Uh, if anything was above the controller's limit, then it would go to the CEO in my case. But we'll log in as the controller. And here's our batch for those two payments that need to be reviewed by the controller because they were over $2,000. So what we'll do in this case is we'll approve one and not approve the other. When I save this and hit the approve button, I'm gonna get a prompt. Uh, we require the user to put in a comment as to why they're not approving it. And that will be viewed, you can view that from the data tab that I showed you within the check approval module. So you can see why a payment was declined. So I'm just gonna say pay later, save that, and then we can hit the approve button and it's gonna go ahead and it will approve this first payment and it will decline this payment and create a new batch in Sage 300 for that payment. Um, and again, it's been uh, an email notification has gone out. So if you grab that, this one has gone back to the person that submitted the batch in the first place to let them know that it's been approved. So who's the, here's who did the approvals. And then down here, I can see that there was a check that was not approved. So we'll highlight for that user what was not approved as well, so they can go and review. Um, and you can see here the comment sits right there as to why it wasn't approved. So if there's something that they need to go and do before it gets the approval, um, you can see why it was declined. So now when we go back into the AP payment batch, you can see here, so there's our batch 91 for today's date. Three payments have been approved and it's sitting in an approved status. And then an additional batch was created for the payment that wasn't approved for 3390. But in this case, I can now print and post the checks. Um, and then this batch I can review at a later date and um, you know, that can be then resubmitted for approval. Now, um, what I'm gonna do in this, or actually we'll create, let's create a new batch because I wanna show you how it works in terms of the bank accounts doing a, an approval around a particular bank account. So if you recall uh, for my one bank account, the visa it was, um, I said that that needed to be approved by the AP clerk. So I'm gonna change the bank here to that Visa bank account. And we'll just put in any vendor number here. That's a currency message. Um, and let's just say we're gonna pay this and add that. Uh, you know what, it probably needs to be above 500. So let's uh, pick another vendor here. Here, we'll pick this $4,000 one and add that. So because I specified only the AP clerk needs to approve against this particular bank account, uh, that's who's gonna need to do the approval. So it's this batch here, number 93. So we'll submit that for approval. And in this case, the message would have gone to the AP clerk. And there's that batch 93 sitting there for approval. Oh, I guess it did show us both of them. Um, so we could go ahead and approve those. So that's how it works at the bank level. So it's, it's strictly based on the bank account that you've chosen on the payment batch as to who it would go to for approval. 
So that was the overview that I wanted to show today. I'm happy to unmute and uh, answer any questions that anyone has. If you're shy, you could put it in the chat box as well. <laughs> And if there's no questions, then I want to thank you for spending your time with us today. We really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I'll send a follow-up email with a link to the recording. And um, you can ask me any questions from that email as well. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Thanks, Nancy. You're welcome.